The main difference this year with the boat is it's been converted to a foiler. We sailed the conventional AC45 in the last World Series before the last America's Cup. And this time round, with foiling being such a great leap forwards and quite spectacular, the decision was made by all the teams to convert these boats to foiling boats, which was actually a bit of a joint project. We had design representation from each team and there was a bit of a sort of joint effort to convert these boats. Now the main difference is the addition of the foils, so we've got new daggerboards and new rudders in the boats for this year. Um, the daggerboards are relatively say, standard design um, to keep the boats relatively stable, although you still see plenty of action on these things, but um, trying to keep it relatively simple so that we could convert the boats quite easily. So we've got um, two daggerboards, the main lift providing devices on board, um, and you've got the ability to rake the dagboard, so you can actually move the dagboard rake, and that's controlled in two positions on the yacht. The helmsman has some buttons just in front of him, so you'll see him steering with one hand, and then he's got another hand on buttons in front of him. So he's actually controlling the rake of the dagboard, which controls the amount of lift, so he effectively controls the flying height of the boat. And then there's another crew member up front who's also got uh, use of those buttons, so during a manoeuvre, he can help with the control, because during a manoeuvre, you've got one guy has crossed early and he's steering out of the jibe, for example, and then the helmsman is now crossing across, but there's, there's a lot of people busy, so there's, in a manoeuvre there's the ability for one of the other crew members to help out with the daggerboard rake control, because you've now got boards going up and down and it's pretty busy. Well, you try not to go too high, because if the foils come out of the water, they don't work so well in air, so you come crashing down pretty quickly. So you'll see the foils have a, have a bit of a V shape for a bit of a stability and you'll see the tip piercing a bit and that's about as high as you, you go. So you'll be a few metres off the water. But add in a bit of heel and on the windward side you'll feel pretty high. <laughs> we'll see some impressive speeds. Um, but it's, it's a relatively standard design. It's nothing too advanced in any key area. There's, it's a, but, um, yeah, it'll be high 30 knots, it'll still be pretty impressive and fast enough, you know, but you'll be hanging on. In terms of the racing side, it's going to be interesting. We've not done that much, well, done any fleet racing. You know, the teams here are fleet racing these foilers. We've been training before this regatta and it's been, been impressive and it's been quite fun to watch. But um, everyone's learning the intricacies of that. We've been match racing in the previous cup with the foilers, but we've not done, done much fleet racing. So that'll be an interesting change now and everyone getting to grips with that. The main thing with the rig on this boat is the, um, the large wing sails in use, um, which is a lot more efficient than an ordinary mainsail. Allows you to have a lot more control over the, over the effect of the sail shape. We can change the camber in the bottom with the control and we can also control the amount of twist. And all the time that's a quite an aerodynamic shape while we're doing that. So it allows us to control how powered up or depowered we are. It gives us a lot of versatility. It's a little heavier than a conventional sail, but in all round efficiency, it's, it's a win. Coupled with that, we've got um, three sizes of jib in front um, that we'll use depending on the condition. So just a, a large, a medium and a small. Um, and then for downwind and the lighter stuff, we'll have a code zero set in front of that as well. So that will get hoisted at the top mark and um, unfurled and unfurled. For, so um, that's another boat handling sort of issue and thing for the guys to deal with. So yeah. in a, above, I don't know, I've, I've only been a few days and we haven't seen this Code Zero used yet because in the windier stuff, you, you're fast enough, you only need the jib. You actually don't go that much faster, if at all, with the Code Zero and it's just a lot of hassle and to, to deploy, whereas you'll be as fast with just the jib only going downwind. So depending on the wind strength, it depends on the exact sails you'll see used. So, five crew on board. Um, I think before this first regatta, you'll see each team mixing it up a little bit as to exactly who does what on board. You've obviously got a helmsman and a wing trimmer. Their, their roles are pretty clear. But how you run the other guys in front is going mi to be mixed up between each team. Um, in terms of the roles, you've got to have somebody trimming the jib. Um, you've got um, daggerboards to be pulled up and down. You've got uh, Code Zero halyard. You know, the, the, jib, the Code Zero's got to be hoisted. Um, you've got to have someone that's helping with ley lines and some of the tactics stuff. So how all those roles get broken down will, will vary a lot on the team and the physical breakdown of that team. Because there is a weight limit, so you've got to average 87.5 kilos per person. I think there's a weigh-in tomorrow morning, Friday before the regatta, there's a weigh-in. So a lot of the sailing team here are all on diets. <laughs> looking forward to that weigh-in weigh -in being over. 
and um, so you'll see some teams will be more average and they'll be all consistent on their way. Other teams are trying to have a couple of light guys and one or two big guys. We've got a big powerful grinder. We've got Chris Brittle on board who's a really big powerful guy and with the other guys have gone on a diet to make sure they can have him. But they're pleased, they're pleased for that every time he's trimming something or grinding something. So you know, that's, that's something we've consciously done. Um, but um, other teams might have chosen to do something different. So that would be interesting to see how that goes. While the boats look pretty advanced and quite technical, the actual fact is they're pretty simple. You know, the wing, for example, there's only two controls on it. You can control the camera in the bottom, just how full it is. Perhaps on a conventional boat, you'd look at the out tool and how full it is down the bottom. And then you've got the twist control, so how twisted it is. Um, that's pretty much the wing. You know, it looks all space age and all, how can you possibly control that? But um, it's relatively simple when you actually dig into the control system on these wings. Um, I think one of the hardest things is how hard it is to read because it's, it's quite solid, it's not really moving, it's not giving any feedback, so you need to understand the settings and looking at telltales. But in, in, in that sense, it's, it's, it's pretty simple and it's pretty similar to other sails. It's not as daunting as people think. And the boat as a, as a whole, it's the same things. It's the same priorities, but um, you're, just, you're just playing different boats, there's different things you've got to prioritise perhaps, and, um, and that's all we're learning here. It's, it's the same stuff, you know. It's not actually that complicated. The hard thing with these boats is the speed everything happens and how physically demanding they are. So you're doing fundamentally a lot of the similar things, but um, the time you've got to do it and how hard it is to do and the moving platform that you're on is, is what's different.